The question here, Sal, is do you put Gargano on the main roster when this feud is over? I don't see him regaining the gold. I don't think he should regain the gold. I think Cole should hold on to the belt for as long as possible until maybe, like, Ciampa comes back. That would be pretty sick. That'd be a great story to tell. But, um, yeah, so what do you do with Gargano? Do you have him stay put in NXT? Or do you take the risk in putting him on the main roster where he will very likely flounder because of how bad the creative's been in recent months? So, you know, Gargano has done it all in NXT, and, you know, obviously you can very well find stuff for him to do. He was kind of on the main roster, and I think he was going to stay on the main roster until the whole Tampa getting hurt thing happened. And I also think they pulled him off from the main roster because they were actually feuding at the time, so it made no sense for them to be in a tag team. You know, but I think ah, it's hard because, you know, it can go either way. Um, I personally would keep him in NXT until Ciampa eventually comes back. And either A, maybe Ciampa goes right for the uh, NXT championship, or maybe we for one more time, Gargano and Ciampa go for the tag team titles and win the tag team titles one last time before they get, both get called up on the same night. I think Ciampa and Gargano going up as a tag team will help them both in the long run before calling them up as singles competitors. So I would keep Gargano in NXT. I'm of the mindset now, though, coming out of you know recent episodes of Raw and SmackDown, although the guy deserves to be on the main roster, I agree. I think he should stay put in NXT for the foreseeable future. It's not just... I don't know. I feel like after what we've seen from the main roster in the last, I don't know, six months... Um, especially with a recent batch of call-ups. Because it seems like at this point, they've taken all the excitement out of seeing our favorite NXT stars on the main shows. At this point, I almost don't want them to be called up. I think they should stay right where they are. Aleister Black has done nothing since being called up. Um, I know they're doing the whole vignettes on SmackDown, and that's cool and all, but it screams to me like they have no plan for the guy. Ricochet's been trading wins with Cesaro. He's not buried by any means. But it's not like it's not like he's lighting the world on fire either. And then the where are the War Raiders? Like the, the War Raiders. They, they haven't been on Raw in weeks. EC three has been completely I mean, buried. They're finally using Nikki Cross, but Jesus Christ. Revival I mean, became a joke comedy act. <laughs> who did Heavy Machinery? Uh Revival. Oh, the Revival too. I mean, yeah, the Revival. Heavy Machinery is another one. Uh, Ember Moon, where the hell has she been? Alexa Bliss is a fucking raw superstar getting a SmackDown title shot, and Ember Moon's on SmackDown and she's nowhere to be seen. So again, it's it's at a point, and this has been the case for a long time, where I feel like you either sink or swim on the main roster, in that there were always... The only what'd you say? person who's actually doing well, he's with Shane McMahon right now, but the only person who I, I came out of NXT was Drew McIntyre, but that has to do because the guy's like 6'7", and like, you know, Vince McMahon's love child, like exactly what Vince McMahon pictured as a raw superstar, but mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's exact, but other than that, I think Drew McIntyre's the only notable pull-up in the last year. Well, and even McIntyre, like even McIntyre, he was a guy that was building momentum, was Raw Tag Team Champion, beat Dean Ambrose, beat Rollins. I think people forget that he pinned Seth Rollins before WrestleMania, yeah. which went fucking nowhere. Um, never beat Roman Reigns. They're having another match for whatever reason at Stomping Grounds. Who gives a shit? But before Mania, the guy was on a roll. And now he's just another lackey for Shane McMahon. And anything, if you if you associate yourself with Shane, you are doomed to fail. Look at the Revival. They're losers at this point. Elias is a loser. Drew McIntyre will be no different unless he ditches this guy sometime soon. So, again, it's getting to a point now where it's completely ridiculous. And even he is definitely the best of the bunch. And I don't want to even understand why they threw McIntyre with Shane McMahon because the whole reason why he turned on Dolph Ziggler is because, you know, McIntyre wants to be on by himself and he wanted to be that dominant singles guy. Like, pretty sure he, like, was, like, prove the point at the why and then they just throw him in this group that group of losers like it oh. makes no sense for the guy it hurts the guy and mm-hmm. and Drew McIntyre he still is one of my favorite guys on the Raw roster like I do see big things for him but if they keep going this way people are gonna the casual audience is gonna lose the credibility and that's sad but I I eventually wanted to see you know that Lesnar McIntyre match or I thought McIntyre was gonna be the one to take it off Rollins at SummerSlam that's what I thought but mm-hmm. that's great. I do not see that yeah, I mean, they could always rebuild him up to be a threat to uh, a Rollins or a Brock at some point, but it's like, Jesus Christ, the guy was on a roll two months ago, but in that time, they've already reduced him to 
you know, loser level to becoming a punching bag for Roman Reigns. And I know he laid him out on Raw and SmackDown this week. Okay, but like by and large though, he's losing a Roman every other week. And it's very clear that the real feud here is Roman and Shane, not Roman and Drew. And even then, we've seen Roman and Drew a million times before. Going into WrestleMania, coming out of WrestleMania. I'm done with Roman and Drew, but they don't want to give up on that dream for whatever reason. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's it's just a fucking mess. It's at a point now where I really dread seeing anyone get called up. I would rather see people either get called down to NXT like a Tyler Breeze, or just stay where they are. I feel like NXT, yeah, it's developmental, but it's at a point now where they should just make it like an official third brand. Where as opposed to just, you know, switching shows between Raw and SmackDown and the Superstar Shake-Up, people can go to NXT too. Like, that's what it should be. Not everyone. Like, I don't want to see all the losers from Raw and SmackDown on NXT to uh, rejuvenate their careers. I have no no desire to see, like, a Titus O'Neil or an Eric Young back in NXT. Um, but, like, the bigger names, like an EC3, why not put him back where he was? Because he's doing nothing right now. And um, Gargano, I, I honestly fear for his future because he's in NXT putting forth the best matches of our generation in WWE with Andrade, Tommaso Ciampa, Adam Cole. The guy is like a modern-day Shawn Michaels, and I hate comparing people to other people, but it's true. Like, no one of this generation is as close to being what Shawn Michaels was to the late 90s, early 2000s than what Gargano is currently. And I feel like as soon as you call him up, he's just another guy. He's like the next Cedric Alexander the next Cesaro, who's a good hand in the ring, who can, might have the occasional very good match, but, like, will never get beyond a certain level. That's what yeah, happened to and Neville and a lot of other people. It's sad, but, like, you know, I feel bad for, obviously, people that call up. I feel bad for the superstars, but the one I actually really feel bad for is Triple H, because Triple H takes his time to build these guys and actually make them a superstar and all, for them to get called up and just become losers, and that... You know, we all hear the rumors and speculation. We don't know for sure, but I'm sure Triple H is very frustrated with Vince McMahon and the creative team because he takes the time to build up these superstars for them just to do nothing. No, exactly. Absolutely. I tweeted out uh, just a few months ago and the news broke that the Revival wanted out and Ty Dillinger and then Hideo Itami asked for his release. Now, Sasha Banks is sitting out right now. And these are all NXT stars, all people who had, you know, a decent amount of success in NXT. Who were killing it down there on the takeovers, won championships, and then they get to the main roster and they see their passion for pro wrestling just killed dead. It's unbelievable. Like, I mean, I mean you heard the Moxley interview I'm sure with Derek on the podcast. Yeah, Moxley just talked about how things are run, and he said that you know, obviously, he said that like towards the end he had no motivation for this. Similar, he like lost his spirit, he lost like you know lost his spirit for wrestling, almost like Steve Punk did, and this like was done. Mm-hmm. Like and look and luckily he still loved wrestling enough to go do something else. But you know, being a punk, someone who still to this day does not want to wrestle because of what WWE, the way it is and how it is. Exactly, exactly. And they're just killing the the passion of these people with the way they're booking them on the main roster. So I'm sure anyone, and I'm sure a lot of people, if not everyone in NXT, heard that fucking podcast. You would have to be living under a rock to have not heard that John Moxley podcast with Chris Jericho. So after hearing that podcast, why would any one of them want to go to Raw or SmackDown at this point? Like, why would you want to be called up aside from, yeah, maybe the pay grade? But, like, knowing what they go through and what they have to deal with, why would anyone want to willingly be called up? Like, I I think it, they, they might just request to stay right where they are. And if Vince has no plans for these people, oh, give me Gargano. Okay, for what, though? To do what? To, to have a match with Cesaro this week and then nothing the next week? Like... Same thing with the War Raiders. They got called up randomly in the midst of their tag team title reign, which is so stupid because they should have been down in NXT right now. They, they could have been in that ladder match at TakeOver if Vince all of a sudden didn't wake up one morning and wanted them on the main roster for no reason because they're not even on the show. They have not been on the show for like close to a month. So again, it's completely ridiculous.